Hey everyone. Today I want to talk a little bit about deduction. Now, deductive reasoning is basically you start with premises, and if these premises are true, these conclusions must also be true. For example, if I eat an entire turkey in one sitting, I will be very full. I have eaten an entire turkey in one sitting, therefore I am very full. And this is a logically sound argument. Um, because if the premises are both true, the conclusion must also be true. That's deductive reasoning in a nutshell. Now, what Sherlock Holmes calls deduction is actually not deduction for the most part. Sometimes he uses deduction, but what he uses mostly is a process called abductive reasoning, which basically is where you observe certain effects and you try to come up with a logical cause that could explain those effects. For example, if you see that a person's book is slanted in a particular direction, it implies that they are right or left-handed. Uh, a person's notebook, that is. Um, it implies that they're right or left-handed due to the position your hand has to be in to write in the book. Um, likewise, if a person's phone uh, is in their left-hand side pocket, it's more likely that they're left-handed. Um, and if it's in the right-hand side pocket, it's more likely they're right-handed due to the way people usually go to grab their phones. Now, this is not always true. There will be exceptions. But that's the difference between a deductive reasoning and abductive reasoning. Abductive reasoning looks for probable causes, not guaranteed causes, um, because there are so few things you can observe that are always caused by exactly the same thing. Uh, so few things you can observe that are, that are absolutely 100% guaranteed to be true that it's not useful to be looking for those. I mean, it's great whenever you happen to find one of those, but for the most part, you can't rely on that. You have to rely on building up a probable theory um, rather than a definite guaranteed, you know, cause. I mean, that's because we're not dealing with, like, trying to prove that someone is guilty of murder. If you were trying to prove something like that, you'd kind of want to make absolutely sure, and you'd use deductive reasoning for that, or at least go for something extremely probable. But if you're just trying to deduce things about uh, people, you know, you know, that you happen to meet, uh, it's okay to just go with probability instead. You can be pretty sure someone's left-handed. You may not be 100% sure, but you can be pretty sure, and you can do this through probability. So over time, you'll develop a feel for the balance between probable and useful. You know, some things are probable, uh, are very probable, but you'll have to find the balance between what is very probable and what's sort of probable but more useful, because you can uh, get a few very useful things and put them together to form one extremely, um, I mean, a few uh, sort of probable things to form one very probable thing. For example, if you see this, it implies someone's left-handed. If you see this, it implies someone's left-handed. But if you see both, it strongly suggests that someone is left-handed, because the likelihood that both cues are false uh, is much lower than it is that one of them is false. So I will go into deductive reasoning in the future. I will give you some logic puzzles, um, which is uh, which I like to use to train my uh, logical thinking ability. I'll also go into abductive reasoning and will explain some of um, the ways you can make deductions using abductive reasoning. And not really deductions, I use that term in the Sherlockian sense. Um, but until then, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing on this video. Um, and thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.